Using the CodeBlocks integrated development environment, I am going to show you how to write a very simple program to calculate a electric bill. Irrespective of the number of units used or consumed by the compiler, sorry by the consumer, the bill is going to be 7 rupees per unit. So if a consumer has consumed 100 units, the bill is going to be 700 rupees. So based on this problem definition, let me try to start creating my first program on code blocks. So in order to create a program on code blocks, I will first clear, click on create a new project. Okay. Once I click on create a new project, I'll get something called as console application. I'll double click on that or I can click on that and click go. Then I'll get the option to choose C or C++. I'll choose C because we're still learning C. Click on next. Here I'll give the project title as just the name bill. Bill stands for electric bill. So don't touch anything else. Just type in the project title and click in next. Then on the screen you got to do nothing. It says that my compiler is the GNU GCC compiler. Just ignore all these for now. At the right time I'll give you hints on how to use the debugging. Click on finish. Then you will see this particular blank screen open up. On the left side where you see sources, click on the plus sign and double click on the main.c. So you will have seen a default program called as hello world. So it gives you a blank template to start typing the code. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete this part since I don't see any use of a hello world at this point of time. So what I'm going to do is the number of units assuming it to be an integer I'm going to define it as units all right and then what I'm going to do is since the units is going to be a whole number and not a fraction the cost of per unit is seven rupees so I'll have another variable called as total which is also an integer it's generally a great idea to define one variable declaration per line but a lot of times I myself do not follow this advice because of screen space limitations when I'm typing the code. So once I define these two variables, what I need to do is I need to first ask the user to enter the units and whatever is the units I need to multiply it with the price. Here what I'm going to do is in order to define what is the price per unit, I'm going to use a hash define. So in the hash define, I'm defining the cost per unit with this particular variable cost per unit as seven. So I'm defining the cost per unit as seven rupees. Here the first stage what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask the user enter the number of units consumed. Okay, the user is going to enter the number of units consumed. Now in your IDE, you will have seen this. Once this printf enters these double quotes and all these things automatically come and that speeds up your typing. Then I'm going to say scanf. Okay, I'm going to say percentage D and address of units. So here the user is going to enter the number of units consumed by him or her. Then total is quite simple. I'm going to say total is number of units consumed into unit sorry it should be unit underscore cost so the number of units consumed into unit cost is going to give the total bill for that consumer for that particular month then i'm going to simply say printf bill amount is percentage d slash n okay and then i could very well put the value of total here okay so now if you see in this particular program i have written a very simple program to calculate the usage of electricity based on the number of units so i have declared two variables one is units to ask or store the units consumed by the consumer total is used to store the 
final bill amount based on the number of units and I have used a hash defined here if you see here I have used a hash defined that is where is the cost of one unit I have defined it as 7 later on if they change it to 10 I just have to change it at this particular place and everywhere in the code it will do a search and replace and it will replace unit underscore cost with 10 now what we can do is we can just go ahead and I'll show you how you can go ahead compile and run this particular piece of code so just to make this a little more clear now I'll just talk a little bit about indentation it's always a good practice after declaring variables leave a space then you have this next group of statement I have put them together then after the next group I have again left a space then again I have a next group of statements so spaces on the left spaces between lines these are all called as indentation you can write the entire program in one line but then the problem is as I told you in the earlier theory classes the maintenance is going to be extremely difficult and you'll surely not be appreciated if you do that thing when you work for the company. So what I'm going to do is now we have typed in this code let me click on this save button here. So now the code gets saved. I can run it directly using a shortcut key but I'll show you the different steps. So let me click on build okay so what build does is it compiles the current file okay and it allows you to run the code so that you can test the output so instead of just the build I'll do a build and run, run so instead of build and run you can press the shortcut key F9 so now when I press the build and run what is going to happen is this particular code is going to get compiled since there were luckily no errors it came up with the output screen now let's see what I'm going to do here enter the number of units consumed let us say I consume 200 units so my final total bill should be 1400 let's see if that's the case so it's showing bill amount here as 1400 which means my program logic is correct so this is a simple program which is showing you how to using simple simple sequential logic you're able to get things done Again, you can play around with a lot of things and find out what are the errors. Let's say if I remove this semicolon, all right? Now you see if I try to do a build here, okay? This gear, this box, gear box, if I click, it's only a build or a compile. So when I click on build, now you see the compiler doesn't seem to like what I have done. It's giving me a lot of messages. So if you look at these messages here, all right, let's try to increase the size of this, okay? So you can see it. So here you can see it. It's giving you messages which are not very clear. It doesn't simply tell you that a semicolon is sorry, a com, a, a, sorry, a semicolon is missing. It's giving you all kind of confusing message. So you should be very careful when you type. So let me press escape. Let me go back here. Let me type the semicolon. And now if I click on the build, now you should see things are pretty fine. So once the build is successful, you will get a message something like this at the bottom. For a successful build, it is telling you that it's a GNU CC compiler, GCC compiler. And if you see zero errors, zero warnings, then you're perfectly fine. Generally, people tend to ignore warnings, but it's not a great idea to ignore warnings because later on, when you're running the program, they may end up giving you errors during runtime. So pay attention to any warnings the compiler is throwing at you.